Amen. Well, glad to see y'all. <laughs> we haven't had the, quite this big a pack in a few years, so it's, it's, I know it's, uh, it's just exci- it's exciting for us. I mean, sometimes, you know, in church, we don't have this many people on, a, on average Sunday, just saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you're welcome to come uh, on any of those other Sundays. Um, so, uh, and hopefully you're glad to be here. You know, I'm, I mean, you look like you're having fun. You look like you're smiling and having a pretty good time. You may be feeling a little hot. You may be feeling a little stuck together with your neighbor. Um, I don't know, but, but hopefully you're, you're glad. It's Christmas time. You're, uh, you've got some joy. It, it might be just a duty for you, but most of you, hopefully that's not it. It's, uh, you're glad to be here. Well, uh, Christian, uh, Christmas is traditionally a time for joy, for happiness, for rejoicing. And uh, not that everyone is feeling merry and bright, <laughs> uh, or should be. I mean, pe- people go through tough times at all, all, all uh, seasons of the year. Um, some of us have lost people recently, or we have memories of losing people around this time of year, or we, we didn't have a great experience of Christmas when we were kids, or we just, you know, we have ongoing struggles with depression. All, there's a lot of reasons why you might not actually feel like you should, you feel like you should feel happy, but you really don't. But, I mean, that's, that's okay. Um, and, you know, we're not here to try to make people feel happy when they don't. But I want to talk about happiness and joy tonight in any case. Uh, for many of us, uh, albeit not all of us, we've got, we've got pretty neat things going on right now. We've got family gatherings. We've got ma- amazing meals, <laughs> banquets, parties, excited kids, which... Uh, Makes a big difference. Time off work. That's pretty, pretty cool. I don't get that, but you know, many. <laughs> I mean, all those kinds of things, lots of reasons for us to, for, to be happy. And if we are at all normal, we want to be happy, right? That's, that's just a normal uh, human thing. And we want others to be happy too. We want others around us to be, to be sensing some kind of joy in their lives. And, and this brings me to my first point. And that is this, God is the God of joy. God is the God of joy. And of course, he wants us to know joy. He wants us to experience joy. He wants us to have joy and happiness in our lives. Um, sometimes he gets presented in our world as kind of a killjoy, somebody that says, you can't do this and you can't do that. And he's actually quite the opposite of that. Uh, so let's think for a minute just about creation, about the way things have been designed and set up, the universe. Um, just the beauty that surrounds us, for one thing. Uh, we just At any time of the year, we can, especially in our neck of the woods here, <laughs> we can go out and see beautiful trees some, sometimes of the year. We can see beautiful flowers, uh, beautiful hills, uh, other places. There's oceans and there's, there's mountains and there's huge meadows and there's creatures, there's, there's starry skies. The place is filled with an, an incredible beauty and, and incredible sounds, like just... Uh, you know, bird songs or, uh, you know, crashing of waves on the shore or the thunder. Remember that the beautiful hymn, uh, How Great Thou Art, I Hear the Rolling Thunder, Thy Power Throughout the Universe Displayed. And these, these are designed in joy by this great joy giver, and they're for our joy, to give us joy. Uh, sometimes something we don't think about as much as maybe we should is the, the, the kinds of things that have been p- provided for us to eat. <laughs> So, I mean, fruit, for instance. I mean, God could have just, we, we could probably get by with a whole lot less than what we have. Like, we could probably do with, like, I don't know, rice and maybe apples because we need some, like, and maybe, I don't know, uh, some protein. <laughs> but look, we don't just have apples as fruit. We have bananas, we have oranges, we have cherries, we have mangoes, we have papaya, we have strawberries and raspberries and cherries and, you know, I, I, I could go on, but I'll let your imagination do the trick. Those aren't necessary. Those are just overabundance. Same with vegetables. I mean, I don't know how keen you are about vegetables. We probably could have got by with like lettuce or potatoes or something. But we got carrots and we got radishes and we got cauliflower and we got broccoli and we got, uh, what else we got? <laughs> What's that purple stuff you don't like, Dan? <laughs> we, can, we can never remember the name. What is it? Eggplant, eggplant yeah. I mean, who would have ever thought of eggplant, right? So, all these kinds of food, and, and we just multiply that. They're, they're, they're designed in joy over abundantly to give us joy. I have a, a great list of these things, but this is your homework to think about all the ways our, our universe is designed by a joy giver. You can see it. We ourselves, who are made in the image of God, 
have a huge capacity for joy. We have a huge capacity for artistic endeavors of all sorts. You know, we're always like sculpting or, or, or crafting or drawing or painting or, uh, or composing or decorating or something, right? We're forever doing that stuff. And we love singing, even if we're not particularly talented with it. You know, we love to sing. And many of us, probably all of us in heart, at heart kind of love to dance. We, we do, we, this reminds me on uh, Thursday, we, we went caroling with uh, a bunch of little ones, five little kids, five years to nine years old. And uh, they were a little shy at first. We went to four different seniors' residences here. The first time, they were, we were doing the 12 days of Christmas with actions. You know, like 12 lords a-leaping, you know, whatever, 10 lords a-leaping, nine ladies dancing. And uh, yeah, you get the idea. So the first place, they were just... Mm -hmm. But by the time we got to Echo Hills, the fourth place, they were dancing. They were, <laughs> they were just popping around, having a great old time. Because it's in our spirit to do that. We love to dance. We love to play. It's not just kids that love to play. I got to tell you. I, I, we're playing right through. The, you know, I know guys in their 90s that are playing stuff. Like if it's br not bridge, it's, <laughs> it's cribbage or canasta or something, you know. Uh, people curl. We, we, we have all kinds of games and, and things that we play at all life long. And we're always attracted to wherever there might be some humor and some laughter and some smiling, right? All this tells us that we are creatures of joy. We have a, an amazing capacity for joy. And these, all these things, these enterprises and these, these gifts that surround us in, our, in, our, in this universe that God has put us in, they give us joy. Yet, even with all of this, there is something missing. Unless we're actually connected with the joy giver, unless we have a relationship with our God, our joy cannot be complete. This is why Jesus came. This is why God became one of us. He became human. And when we put our trust in Jesus and in his death for us, for our sakes, we are reconciled to our God. He lives in us by his Holy Spirit. And our joy begins to be full. Jesus' birth, therefore, was truly cause for great joy. In the, in the scripture that Jeremy just read, we have the story of the wise men. And they were very childlike, it seems to me. <laughs> they were with great naivety. They bopped up to Jerusalem from someplace. And they say, where is he who's born king of the Jews? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you see, kids do that kind of stuff all the time. They just blurt things out. In Jerusalem, there was this guy named King Herod who was a, a kind of a psychopathic ruler. <laughs> no, truly, he killed people just for little or no reason, his family members included. So if someone else is going to come into town and, and start telling them, oh, there's another king someplace, that concerned him. But they had no awareness of this. And where's he? So anyway, the story unfolds, and they, they finally head on to Bethlehem, and they see the star, and it says... They were overjoyed, which is where I got my sermon title tonight. The old King James Bible, some of you remember the, this old, the old English Bible, the old version we used to always read. It says, they, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And all those words, actually, that's, that's closer to the original language. There's like four words in there that talk about how much they were rejoicing. They rejoiced with exceeding great joy about the coming of this child. They didn't even understand it. But they knew something really wonderful, really amazing was coming down the pipes. The shepherds, uh, that's the story in Luke. This is the story in Matthew. In the Gospel of Luke, we have the story of the shepherds. And uh, after they'd come to, the, to, uh, to see the babe Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, it says, they went on their way glorifying God and praising him. So they're full of joy. And actually, a chapter or so before that in Luke, when Mary, who's still pregnant, uh, is, is talking with her cousin Elizabeth, who's also pregnant, They're having this conversation. Suddenly she breaks into ecstatic utterances and she says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. There's so much joy that came to earth with the coming of this child. Joy, joy, joy. Joy all around. May this holy joy fill us tonight as we draw near to God and celebrate the birth of of his son, Jesus our Lord.